The Dead Break Elbow Extension Adapter provides a robust solution for extension of medium voltage power cables up to 28 kV operating voltage. The extension adapter mates with the cable entrance of a dead break elbow on one end and features a disconnectable joint interface on the other end. The adapter provides just under 19 inches of extension length and is provided with a pre-installed compression lug to simplify installation. Applications include pad-mounted equipment changeouts, such as replacing live front with dead front switch gear, and the repair of medium voltage cable and accessory failure. The extension adapter is installed with either a JS series sleeve or a JSCS series cold shrink sleeve. In this video, we will demonstrate installation with our innovative JSCS series cold shrink sleeve. This video is for demonstration purposes only and should not be used in place of approved product training and installation instruction sheets. If you have any questions at all while installing our product, please contact the factory to speak with a technical expert. Confirm an offset of approximately 18 inches between the center line of the bushing and the end of the cable. Trim cable end if needed. The cable should be free to move at least two inches in either direction. Confirm that 40 inches of clearance exists from the bushing. If less than 40 inches of clearance is available, contact the factory. Using supplied or approved silicone grease, clean and lubricate surface of the integral cable adapter and cable entrance of the dead break elbow. Install dead break elbow onto integral cable adapter, sliding until the lug is completely seated. If the dead break elbow has a capacitive test point, ensure the test point is facing outwards for accessibility. Warning. Confirm the lug has fully seated inside the dead break elbow housing as shown. Hand tighten stud fully into mating part so no threads are visible on the bushing side. If any threads are visible, confirm correct stud is being used and confirm bushing and stud are not damaged or cross-threaded. Using supplied or approved silicone grease, clean and lubricate the dead break interface and bushing. Place one hand on the extension adapter and one hand on the body of the dead break elbow. Lifting together, push the dead break elbow onto the mating part, lining up the hole in the lug with the stud. Check the positioning of the elbow and extension adapter assembly before and after mounting to determine if the lug has shifted position. If a shift is observed, you must repeat the assembly to restore correct positioning. Install mating part per manufacturer instructions. Straighten and train cable end. Trim cable to 1 and 3 quarter inches from center of hole and spade. Clean cable jacket at least 24 inches from end of cable. Prepare the cable according to approved techniques following the cutback dimensions and requirements detailed in the instructions. Check dimensions carefully before proceeding. A two-scale cutback template is included in the instruction sheet booklet. Before installing the lug, make sure the spade of the lug is parallel to and aligned with the mating component. The conductor must be fully seated inside the barrel. Install either a compression or shear bolt lug according to provided instructions. Confirm distance from top surface of lug to insulation cutback does not exceed 7 and 1 quarter inches. Clean the cable insulation with approved wipes or solvent, wiping from the lug end of the insulation towards the semiconductive shield. Apply supplied stress control mastic centered over edge of semiconductive shield cutback. Apply the mastic with light tension so it slightly stretches and completely wraps the cable. Apply grease over exposed insulation and stress control mastic with approved or supplied silicone grease. Slide sleeve body over cable, exposing lug spade. Install Belleville washer first, then flat washer on bolt. Insert bolt through hole in the lug and hand tighten to engage threads. Engage 15 16 hex head, 
cork barrier bolt until head shears. The barrier bolt is designed to shear once the correct torque has been reached. Using supplied or approved silicone grease, clean and lubricate internal cavity of sleeve and bus interface. Slide sleeve body over lug and push onto bus, ensuring it is fully seated. Install restraint in sleeve housing channel. Restraint will only install if sleeve is fully seated. Fully tighten sleeve restraint with a 5 16 hex head or a flathead screwdriver. The restraint is designed to click when fully installed and will not over tighten. Grasp the removal ring and push it against the core flange. Twist so that the cutting teeth break the tape on both sides. The core may be removed by hand. Here we demonstrate a core removal tool, which is useful in installations where space is limited. Insert one half of the core removal tool and pry slightly to make room for the second half. Insert the second half and bring the handles together to eject the core from the housing. Completely remove the core from the rubber housing by hand. Do not twist core while removing. Separate the core into two halves and clip any of the remaining plastic rings on the cable. Dispose of the core or recycle. Apply sealing mastic as close as possible to folded back jacket seal while maintaining complete overlap of previously applied jacket mastic. Apply grease over mastic and folded back rubber to assist in deploying jacket seal. Grab the pull tabs and pull out and down to completely deploy the jacket seal over the sealing mastic. Ensure the sealing mastic is not dislodged when unfolding the jacket seal. Connect copper bleeder wire to one or more of the available eyelets on the dead break elbow, extension adapter, and sleeve. Connect bleeder wire and cable neutral and ground according to approved practice. A number 14 copper bleeder wire is included in the kit. This concludes the installation video. Be sure to use the supplied instructions when installing the product. This video is for demonstration purposes only and should not be used in place of approved instructions and product training. If you have any questions, contact the factory or your local sales representative.